Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to create fabulous PowerPoint presentations. Take a look at the slide. How do these slides hit you? Yeah, most presentations are visually a little boring, especially in school. Sorry, teachers. We're so busy being great teachers, we don't always have the time or the skills to make fabulous PowerPoint or slide presentations. But that's okay. You don't have to be a graphic designer just to add a bit of visual interest. So let's get started. Boring slides are boring. If you just have boring slides, even if your content is interesting, it's visually difficult to, difficult to stay focused. Because we're visual animals, humans are very visual, and these days we have so much visual stimulus, we're used to a lot of visual variety. So black text on white backgrounds just doesn't cut it anymore. I'm sorry. Your slides typically want to start with a title slide. Tell people where they are. Are they in the right room? Are they at the right presentation? Are they watching the right lecture? Your title slide should be exciting, engaging. So instead of PowerPoint presentations, you might have more information and further engage your audience by saying how to create fabulous PowerPoint presentations, how to create the best ever pres PowerPoint presentations, how to create slide presentations that are quick and easy to make and engage your audience. All right. If your presentation is longer or complex, you might want to use an introductory slide. There's two types of introductory slides, the overview and the objectives. An overview is like a schedule. It's like an agenda. It's numbered, you'll notice, that first we do this, then we're doing that. Objectives are a little less direct. It's saying, by the end of this presentation, I want you to know or understand this. As I said, those introductory slides are optional. Now inside your slide deck, the actual presentation slides themselves, they must be visually interesting. You can't just use the same image over and over again. The design should be consistent and well organized. You want to make any text on the slide very brief. My mantra is that your slides are not your presentation notes. So don't put every word you're saying on the slide. If you've done that, then you are not necessary. You can just email out everybody the slides and they don't have to come to your presentation. So key points only, anything that you want to reinforce or really make clear should be on the slide. Everything else is in your voice. Just don't use a lot of slide. It's not a book. Don't confuse your slides with something that, with an article. You can use the headings on your slides. You'll notice that my, sliding, my headings have verbs. So you can use them to help the audience understand. You can use the heading to help the audience know where they are in the presentation. If your headings are short, you can use them as a, as a design or visual element, as you'll see on this slide now. Your slides are your reputation. So slides that have typos, that have punctuation or spelling errors, those detract from your professional or whatever reputation you're trying to create. Make sure that your slides are perfect. This typically means getting someone else to look at them as well. It's very difficult for us to catch our own errors because we know what it should say. And so we typically will see that. So if there is an error, we might not notice it. So pause the video, see if you can find all eight errors on this slide. And if you find nine, ooh, maybe you're in for a bonus. Come back when you find them. Reverse type. When we use reverse type, it's beautiful. 
and it's especially effective when you have a lot of images. So if you're showing a portfolio of photography or videos, you might want to have a very dark background because that makes the colors and the images pop. It makes them very beautiful. But any large amount of text that's light on a dark background is physically difficult to read. So be careful with that. Fonts, don't embarrass yourself. Don't use fonts that make you look messy or unprofessional. If you use a font that is not available on the computer you're using to present your presentation, you'll get something like that bottom line that says this font doesn't display properly. When you create a slide deck on your computer, you have the fonts that are available on that computer. If you're then playing that presentation on a different computer, it might not have the same fonts. So that's why I suggest, unless you're an expert and know how to include the fonts, just stick to general, typical fonts like Arial, Helvetica, or Times. Make sure that you contrast text with the background so that people can read it. If you're presenting in person, especially if it's a large room, people might People at the back need to be able to read your slide as well. Now, if you look at that green rectangle with the blue text on it, if you ask people, some people hate that combination because it's very bright and, and it, it feels almost like it's vibrating. I like to use that once in a while just to wake people up. I would not create a presentation where all slides had that combination but I might once in a while for something that was really important because it grabs people's attention visually. Use lots of images. Humans are visual creatures, as I said, and we love images. They're like candy for our brain. And as that old saying goes, an image, what is it? An image says a thousand words. So use an image as wherever you can to reinforce and support what you're saying. Graphs, use graphs. Instead of telling people, in the third quarter, our sales increased by 37%, show them. It's very hard to hear and understand numbers, but like I said, because we're visual, if you show us a graph, we can understand the importance. Oh, that was a lot of sales, or oh, that was terrible sales. So uh, here's a graph that is really sad and ugly and it makes me sad. It's difficult to read. The type is too small. There's too much going on. There's a million horizontal lines. The, the gradients are unnecessary and they're not the same on the yellow and the green. So it just looks messy and confusing. If we look at this beautiful graph, it's very simple. It's very clear. It's color coordinated. It's clearly labeled so you can see what you're actually looking at. Use pie charts. This is a beautiful meme that I downloaded because I think it's cute and it's true. Pie charts visually show things at a glance. Oh, that one thing is really big and this is very small. Now here's an example of something I found on the internet. It's the same concept shown six different ways. Now the first one, the background is, is too busy, it's hard to read. It's about women in part-time jobs and yet the image is kind of a cheap looking clip art. I hope I'm not offending anyone. And it's two men, so it's not appropriate to the content. The second image is a bit better because they've used a pie chart, but it's just sort of floating in space I'm Canadian, so I see it as a hockey puck that's floating in space. I don't really understand that design element to the right, that piece of light blue. It's distracting, but it doesn't add to the information. Same slide, four much better ways. The one on the top right is very symmetrical. A lot of viewers like it because it looks like a magazine layout. It's very clear. I specifically and particularly love the very bottom right one because it's got a lot of power. So remember your slides are not your notes. 
You don't have to have all the information in the slide. So imagine that you're talking about this topic and you say, and guess what percentage of part-time workers in Japan are women? And then you go click and you show that slide. Boom! 72%. That's visually very strong. Me, I would probably color that 72 and have it a bright color to add even more power. But either way, it's going to be a strong slide. So think about the visual emphasis that you're adding. You're not just repeating what you're saying, but you're adding and underscoring and supporting your key points. Clip art, it's bad, it's ugly, it's cheesy. We've seen most of it, especially if you're using the clip art on Microsoft or the first frame that you find when you Google search clip art. Try to avoid clip art, it, it doesn't look professional. Sorry, I hope I'm not offending anybody. Don't stretch your images. Be very careful when you're adding images that you keep the height and width proportionate. If you don't know how to do that, just Google how to keep height and width proportionate and then the name of the tool that you're using, Google Slides or PowerPoint or whatever. Especially if it's an image of a human, we notice that and it looks wrong to the human brain. When we see a distorted human, it looks wrong and we become distracted. If you have data on your slide, for example, in 2020, 80% of people living in Vancouver loved being outdoors. If you've got that on your slide, then you want to include a source on the slide so that people can see that you didn't just make that up. And in summary, you might want to include a summary slide. Again, especially if your presentation is long or complex. Tell people what you spoke about. Tell people your key points. Anything to help them understand and remember. And finally, make your last slide memorable. It should support your key topic, your topic, your thesis, it should support your main points, and it should be something visually strong. Quite often people like to include their contact information on the final slide because, especially if you're giving a presentation in person, this slide often will stay up for a while and people can just click your contact information so that they'll have it. So that's how to create a fabulous and engaging slide deck. Thanks for watching.